Picture this. You're standing in your garden with a pile of cardboard boxes and old newspapers. Instead of tossing them out, you wonder, can I really compost this stuff and feed it back to my soil? It sounds simple, even genius, but like most things in gardening, the real answer is a little more complicated. Cardboard and paper can be both a blessing and a burden in composting, depending on how you use them. And today I'm going to give you the clear truth, no fluff, so you know exactly what's safe, what's not, and how to get the very best results in your garden. Cardboard and paper are high in carbon, which makes them a brown material in the composting formula. Carbon provides the energy microbes need to break down organic matter, but it must always be balanced with nitrogen-rich green materials such as kitchen scraps, grass clippings, or fresh manure. A good composting ratio is roughly three parts carbon-rich materials to one part nitrogen-rich materials, and that's where paper and cardboard can play a useful role. The issue is that paper and cardboard decompose very slowly. They are processed, pressed, and stripped of nutrients during manufacturing, leaving behind tough cellulose fibers. If you throw large sheets of paper or whole boxes into your pile, you'll find them intact months later. The solution is to shred or tear them into small pieces, soak them in water, and mix them with plenty of nitrogen-rich material. If you're using shredded cardboard, aim for about one bucket of shredded cardboard to three buckets of kitchen scraps or fresh green waste and lightly moisten the pile until it feels like a wrung-out sponge. Whenever gardeners talk about composting paper, the same worries come up. Dioxins, BPA, glues, inks, and heavy metals. So, let's break them down and see what's really going on. Dioxins are toxic byproducts that can be formed when paper is bleached with chlorine. They're known carcinogens and it's true they can be found in some paper and recycled products. However, research shows the amounts are extremely small. If pouring boiling water through a white coffee filter does not release enough dioxin to affect your health, then composting that same filter in your garden is very unlikely to create a risk. Dioxins also break down in sunlight and degrade in soil over time with a half-life of one to three years, so it's, you know, not as scary as it might sound. BPA, or bisphenol A, is another chemical that raises eyebrows. It is used in thermal receipts and can slip into recycled paper products. But studies comparing different sources of BPA exposure have shown that diet, through canned foods and packaging, is by far the largest contributor. The trace amount you might get from composting paper is minimal in comparison really. Now, when it comes to glues and cardboard, most are starch-based and made from plants such as corn or potatoes. These break down easily in compost. The small amount of synthetic glue used in box construction is too minor to pose a real concern. So it's all about keeping things in perspective, right? Chemically treated cardboard like waxed pizza boxes or fire retardant packaging is less straightforward. Regulations already limit the most harmful additives, and while composting them likely poses less risk than direct food contact, it's best to keep these out of food growing beds simply because we don't yet have enough data on how they behave in soil. This is where things get a little more serious. Newspapers and plain shipping boxes usually use vegetable-based inks, which are safe. But glossy magazines, colorful flyers, and cereal boxes may use inks that contain trace heavy metals. The challenge here is that heavy metals do not break down. Once they are in the soil, they remain there and can accumulate in plant tissues over time. However, before you panic, consider this. Natural soil already contains heavy metals. A Canadian study found that even in clean areas, soils can contain anywhere from 13 to 750 milligrams of lead per kilogram. In comparison, recycled cardboard averaged only 2.6 milligrams. You'd need to add mountains of cardboard before it made a measurable difference. Interestingly, compost can even reduce the uptake of heavy metals by plants. Organic matter has a high cation exchange capacity, which means it holds on to metals and prevents roots from absorbing as much. This suggests that a moderate addition of paper-based compost may actually reduce risks, rather than increase them. So, are they safe? For the most part, yes, especially when you stick to plain, non-glossy cardboard and unprinted paper. The bigger issue is not chemical safety, but usefulness. 
Cardboard and paper don't bring much nutrition to the soil. They're carbon-rich but low in minerals and nitrogen, so they don't feed crops the way compost made from kitchen scraps, grass clippings, or manure does. If you're sheet mulching to establish a new bed, cardboard is fantastic for smothering weeds while breaking down slowly over time. But using it year after year as your main mulch or piling on too much paper and compost doesn't add real fertility, for soil building, wood chips, leaf mold, and diverse organic matter always win. Alright folks, here's the truth. Composting cardboard and paper is safe in moderation and absolutely fine for sheet mulching or balancing a compost pile. You know, white, non-glossy paper and plain brown cardboard pose little to no chemical risk and can be used even in vegetable beds. Now, glossy, heavily inked, or chemically coated papers well, those are better left for ornamental areas. And while paper does decompose slowly shredding and mixing it with plenty of greens and keeping the pile moist, will help it along. So, think of paper and cardboard as a helper, not a hero. They fill the carbon side of your compost recipe, but, honestly, they won't supercharge your soil the way richer organic matter does. If you want strong crops and living soil, make paper and cardboard just one ingredient in a much bigger mix. So, yes, you can compost cardboard and paper, but don't expect miracles. Use them wisely, keep them shredded, and balance them with nutrient-rich materials. For weed suppression and carbon balance, they're handy allies. For long-term fertility, they're just a small piece of the puzzle. If this guide gave you clarity, do me a favor. Hit that subscribe button on Soil and Crop Central, share this video with a fellow gardener, and keep building soil the smart way. Together, we can turn waste into thriving gardens.